If there was any doubt that the Okanagan is a hotbed for theater, then this episode of Go should put that to rest. On today's episode, we are going to drop by not one, not two or three, but four plays that are opening in the next week or so. So get ready for a busy backstage tour coming up on Go. All right, now stick around. Coming up after the break, we're going to meet some of the cast and crew of Peter and the Star Catcher, which is the origin story of how Peter Pan and Captain Hook and all those characters came to be. We're talking to Kale, and you're one of the folks that gets to play Peter Pan, right? Yes, I am. I play Peter Pan along with Will Oxtoby, and it's been a great role to share and like learn different roles with. It's been really fun. Now this is a big show uh, that's you know pretty fresh off of Broadway and, and received a lot of acclaim. What does it feel like to be like one of the first high schools to be doing it? Well, knowing that. Uh, this play has won seven Tonys. It feels really great to be one of the first schools in BC to be performing it. And I'm really lucky to be playing Peter Pan to be one of the first. It's really cool. Now we're talking to Christian, who, if you can't guess by this beautiful artwork on his upper lip, plays Black Stash. So who's Black Stash? Black Stash is Captain Hook in his younger days before he loses the hand. And this story is about how Captain Hook becomes Hook by chasing after Peter Pan and finding a worthy opponent to satisfy his pirate endeavors. So this is uh, this is going to be pretty exciting to, to have such an iconic role. Oh, it is amazing to have such an iconic role. And Christian Borrell, who played this on Broadway, won a Tony for his performance. So big shoes to fill to try and compare to them. Well, you win, so you win, I'm still the man. Now a show like this is pretty intricate, fairly complicated, lots going on, big cast, takes a good stage manager. What's it like to, uh, to have all these moving pieces? Um, it's really interesting. It's kind of stressful but fun at the same time because you get to be creative and actually work with Caitlin Pearl to see what we can make out of simple lighting changes and sound changes. So what's the biggest challenge that you faced uh, putting this show together? Uh, biggest challenge is there's so many lighting changes and it's not the speed of the show, it's the timing of the show. It's very precise. So I believe right now we have roughly 300 lighting cues. Wow. And we've done musicals, which is more, with like 100 cues. So this is, yeah, it's intense. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Swim on against the current till your courage brings you home till you stand. We've made our way down the hallway. We're still here at the Rotary Center for the Arts, and as you can see, there's an incredible set going on being constructed behind me. We're talking to Christine Daly, who is the uh, director yep. of Jack and the Beanstalk. Mm -hmm. That's coming up soon. Coming up soon. We are going to open on the 23rd of November and have seven shows great through till the 27th of November. A couple of matinees in there. You know, we've got a, an energetic cast here, all doing like a, this little bit of a vocal workshop. It's a vocal practice today as well as just going through the songs in the show so that we're all up to date. So now people are familiar, of course, with the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. What have you done to make it unique and different? Because you guys at TKS always put your own touch on things. <laughs> well, this year um, we have our villain who is actually uh, Melvin Moneybags, and he's, he's after Bess. He wants to marry Bess, so he's trying to figure out a way to get rid of Jack and all the little orphans in the boot orphanage. And, of course, Widow Goodheavens, who is the runner of the orphanage. So we've got an evil villain. We've got but, an evil villain yeah. and a whole cast full of uh, uh, these adorable kids that are working really hard and, and grown-ups. Everybody's mixed together in the show. Yeah, I try to keep things anywhere between the ages of 5 and 99 if that's what comes out for auditions. It's great. 
Land. How are you doing this fine evening? Yes, we are getting ready here to perform our great show called Yeti, the tale of the last remaining abominable snow beast. It is definitely a show that is very fit for children and something that should not be missed. Well, I promise you we'd be back here at uh, the Yeti show and now we're talking to writer, director, producer Bonnie Gratz. That's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, well, it's I don't know how impressive it is or how smart it is, actually, but it's a lot doing, to bite off. It is a lot to bite off, but it sort of happens that way. We're a small company um, and in terms of the operations, but a large company with the artists. So there's lots of artists that work with us, but there's sort of me, myself and I that um, runs things. It is unusual, though, to also be the writer, which sometimes I write stuff, but it's a it's a big challenge. Yeah, this is. Yeti, the untold story of the abominable snow monster? That's right. I actually did research on Yeti and it was fascinating, but there's very little out there. So uh, I took some of those facts, those real life accounts, and I wove them into make it sort of an explanation of this legend. And there's a few little surprises in there, including Sasquatch and Ms. Snowman and the real name of Mrs. Claus. So all those things that you wow. sort of always wondered about, but never knew. Why don't any of the female reindeers fly? All those questions and more will be answered tonight when we premiere. Yeah, I don't have lots to say except that I was invited for expedition. My name is Capitaine Dobrin, as a former military officer. Sarah's new look. Hmm. I'm on the planning committee and I want everything to be perfect, so we're not going to have any growling, roaring snow beasts. Or moody sasquatches. So Yeti it comes to the North Pole um, to learn how to make friends and to learn how to speak and turn his growls into words. Um, but of course, he frightens us all, so it's hard to make friends. And then eventually, he just overcomes his obstacles, and we accept him for who he is. always reminds me of a really good feel-good holiday movie. So there's laughter, there's a little heartfelt moments, but overall it's just great fun. Come on down to the Mary Irwin Theatre at the RCA, the Rotary Centre for the Arts, and join us for a fine performance. Thank you. As you can see, there's lots of great entertainment coming up here in the Okanagan. Don't forget, get out and support your local artists. That is it for the show. I'm Doug Brown. We'll see you next time on Go.